Hey guys, and welcome back to a brand new video and another episode of my Moto GP19 career mode here today for episode number four, part four for round seven and eight for the Catalonia GP and also the Dutch TT of Assen. But uh, before we jump into the episode, guys, if you did miss the last episode, you can check it out by clicking a card in the top right hand corner of the screen. There's also now a playlist for the entire series in the description down below. So if you are new to the series and you haven't seen the first three episodes, go check them out by clicking the link down below in the description for the first three three episodes up until this point. With that being said though guys, I'm going to get a little bit of um, a few things off my chest before we jump into things and hopefully most of you are watching. So first of all, I want to say a massive, massive thank you guys for the support on the channel recently and a lot of you have subscribed recently and uh, that's all from MotoGP. So I greatly, greatly appreciate guys who will be coming on board from the MotoGP side of things because uh, this is an F1 channel. So for me, this is relatively unexplored. I've done MotoGP 17 and 18 before, but this year's game is doing really, really well for me and I really appreciate all of you guys uh, supporting the channel and hopping on board. Now, with that being said, I am mainly an F1 channel. And I want to make it very clear, and hope you guys can understand this from our perspective. I'm an F1 channel mainly, and I do MotoGP as kind of a bit of a, a fun project on the side to take a break from F1 and a bit of a breather. It is in my main series on my channel. So we're going to be doing MotoGP for as long as I can before F1 2019 comes out at the end of this month. And the MotoGP will probably go on ice for about, I want to say about a month, hopefully. Uh, and then we'll bring it back. Now, in my head, there's a lots of different scenarios, and I want your feedback in the comments down below, guys. I'm also going to put a poll in the top right-hand corner of the screen. You guys can vote in there. But basically, there's two things in my head right now that are kind of messing with me, and I need you guys to help me out. So, here's, here's my, my, my situation. I don't think we're going to be able to get to MotoGP, the actual MotoGP category, before F1 2019 comes out, so it might just be Moto 3 and Moto 2 for now, unless we do something else, which this is my this is my situation. So, would you guys would, would you like me to do option A, which is do a whole Moto 3 season, then a whole Moto 2 season, and then a whole Moto GP season, or option B, we do Moto 3 this season, and whenever we get a Moto 2 contract offer this season right now. We jump to Moto2 mid-season and we go to Moto2 to finish the season. And then hopefully then we'll once again for next season progress into MotoGP. So those are the two options. Please vote in the top right of the corner of the screen, guys, and help me out because... Um I'm a little bit unsure. A few other things I want to mention. Um, assists, I'm going to maybe try and start taking some off. You know, I've got anti-wheelie, traction control, and engine braking. I just leave them on because I can't be bothered to take them off. It's just laziness on my on behalf. I have done it before. I did it on last year's game. Um, other things I want to mention is the race distance. Now, a lot of you guys want me to increase the race distance, but for me at the minute, you know, um, like I said before, I'm a little bit against time in terms of this series and, you know, we have 2019 coming out. And I want to try, in my head, the best situation, the best scenario for me is to do Moto3 and Moto2, a whole season of each, and then we move on to, F1, uh, on to, on to F1 2019 when that comes out. And then later on down the line, about a month from now, we'll probably pick it back up and go straight into MotoGP. That's what I want to do. That's my ideal scenario. Um, but yeah, the reason I'm doing three lap races is because I want to try and do two races per episode and the video doesn't get too long. And um, I want to try and get through the seasons as quick as possible without going too fast, you know, because I still want to try and enjoy it and uh, soak in because I'm having a lot of fun in this game. And also, finally, a lot of you guys have asked me for a tutorial on how to make a custom helmet. And if you guys didn't know, I showed it off in the second episode. So we'll have a look now, just real quick, just to remind you guys. But uh, you can see here, I did a custom helmet of my own and I've had a lot of comments asking for a tutorial video so if I get the time this one took me about two and a half hours nearly three hours to make so um, if I get the chance and I get a little bit of time I'm gonna make a tutorial for you guys it'll probably be a much more simplified version I'm gonna try and keep it very basic and uh, very simple for you guys to understand but yeah a helmet tutorial video might be coming soon so keep your eyes peeled for that one and I hope you guys do appreciate it. So with that being said, that's all the admin and all the information out of the way. And I hope you guys do appreciate that. And hopefully you've watched up until this point. But now we can jump into the real meaty potatoes of the video. And we're going to get straight to work here at Catalonia for round seven of the season. And uh, before we do, we've got some upgrades to make. Because if you guys didn't know, we've got some development points. So we're going to st stick those on the, po on, on the bike. We did it in the last episode. We're going to once again reconfirm those upgrades here for this race. So there we go. Job done. Bike is upgraded. Now we're going to move into Catalonia. Catalonia, round seven, and uh, we're going to see how it goes. And first of all, we're going to tackle practice as always. We're going to do the practice programs, get some R&D points saved up, and in the process, set a lap time that's good enough to hopefully get ourselves into Q2. So with that being said, let's jump into Catalonia and let's do some practice and uh, let's try and see if we do have any pace around the circuit. 
Okay, so currently midway through FP1, and as always, we're uh, doing the distance analysis first, and we've scored five points in that, which is pretty good. Uh, not the highest score, but still not too bad. As always, we're not going to bother with the race simulation because it is five laps. It's very long, and uh, we're going to go into the quick lap simulation. Hopefully, that one lap as well, once again, will be good enough to get us into Q2 and will be my kind of Banzai lap in practice. So let's go for that, and let's see how it goes. The assists seem to be staying off as well, which is good. Last year, there was a bug where you would turn off the assists in the main menu, but the second you would go on track, they would kind of restart and reset. So I'm glad that's fixed now because they're actually staying off and uh, we're running no assists and things are going well so far. I've got no complaints. The bike feels exactly the same. So it's a good step in the right direction. Hopefully it also means more pace as well. So far though, I've got to say, I'm liking how fast we are around here. The bike feels good. I feel competitive. I feel sharp. And um, our first sector is pretty good already. So let's try and get the lap time down. Try and beat Amos and get into the 54s. Great little scrap this is between myself and Kanet racing the other slower AI riders as a Garcia does a 54 9, so he's in the long 54s now. Let's see what we do as uh, we get into sector 3, we're just a fraction down, a little bit deep into the hairpin there on the brakes. I always seem to get that one wrong. I think I'm breaking too early, but then it turns out I'm actually breaking too late. But I think there's a little bit of time left in the final sector for me that I haven't really explored yet. This lap should be good enough though to go into Q2, which is good. So, as always, the uh, the practice program pays off as we hit two birds with one stone. That's a great line through there for the penultimate corner. Really, really good line into the final corner now. Down the gear. On the power already here. Here we go. Flat out to the line. Let's try and get a little bit of a toe from Ramirez if we can. To really boost the lap time. Up to the line. And there we go. 54-8. And that will be first place right now in the session as we... Uh, hit the quick lap simulation target as well so that's good news now we're going to see uh, where the rest of the pack is in terms of the AI riders and see where our pace lies so let's see we're currently P1 confirmed in the top right hand corner of the screen let's see so currently it's looking pretty close but there is quite a substantial gap if you look at pretty much from Fanati onwards in P5 so I'd say that lap's good enough for Q2 so I think we're going to call it quits there in FP1 and uh, we're going to just monitor things but we should be good to go into Q2 I think Okay, there we go then. We do go into Q2 as actually the top rider. So that lap in FP1 was actually good enough all weekend to get into Q2, which is great. So all in all, a great day's work on Friday. Now we're on Saturday for the weekend. So we've got to do it all over again. Let's see what the pace is like. I saw a few comments saying they are very slow at Catalonia. Um, they do seem a little bit slower here than they have been at past tracks, but they're still not that slow. They still seem quite competitive, but we'll confirm it now. They're traditionally slow in qualifying anyway. So let's see how it goes as we jump into the race here. Okay then, so two brand new fresh soft tyres on the bike. No one's setting lap times yet as we hit the 10 minute mark. So we're going to try and set the benchmark. So let's see what we can do. A 54.8 is what we've done in practice. So we've got to aim for that lap time again here. Good to see that the assists have stayed off as well, which is good. So I haven't actually had to touch anything. They've stayed off all the way through, which is great. So that's exactly what I want. But here we go then. Right, I was even the pit now. It's going to be a little bit of a distraction here as we race down towards turn one. That rider's going to get right in my way. Foggia, we're going to have to be careful here. Just upsets my line a little bit through there, which is annoying, but we're going to hopefully get past him fairly swiftly. We're going to carry the speed and uh, go around the outside of turn three. Yes, there we go. Nice bit of speed carried through there. Let the bike open up a little bit on the exit. Let's try and set a decent benchmark. I think we've already lost a little bit of time, though. I think a 54 will be the target. Maybe 54.9 now. Much better through there. I actually broke a little bit too early there. But well, I was much tidier with the hairpin compared to my practice lap. I think besides the little bit of traffic issue through turns 1, 2 and 3, it's been a very good lap elsewhere. We absolutely nailed this corner last time. Can we nail it again? A little bit of braking action, but we're just about going to get it sorted out into the final corner. It's been another good lap here. Do we go straight into the 54s? That'd be a good benchmark. Here we go then. Got to wait a little bit for the line. Here it comes. I think it should be a 54. There we go, 54.6. That's a good lap. That's a solid benchmark already right there. Looking at my tyres. Tyre looks okay as well as the same running, no assists. 
as usual, rear tyres a little bit more than the front, so maybe a medium might work in qualifying as we get turn one completely wrong there. But all in all, not too shabby. We're going to go back to the pit lane and uh, wait to see what the AR do in terms of their own pace. Okay, so with four minutes to go, it's looking pretty good. We are comfortably P2. I'm still waiting for um, Booth Amos to set a competitive lap time. He's currently down in P17, which is quite surprising. But uh, Sergio Garcia, my championship rival, my main championship rival, has set a lap time 10 thousandths of a second quicker than me. So we're going to go back out on track and try and beat him. I'm going to try something different though. I'm going to run a fresh soft front. I'm going to go for a medium rear because the rear kind of fades a little bit as the lap goes on. And that might be the game changer for the second half of the lap. So with that being said, let's hit the track and let's try and secure that first place. A bit early on the brakes there, but you know what? We actually hit the apex this time, so that's fine by me. And we're up in sector one as well. We haven't really got a reference though, which is a bit annoying. So we can't see how much we're up by, but we are up. A little bit of wobbling there on the rear as we try to get the power down out of turn three. Let's keep pushing though, it's looking good so far. Very close to hitting the deck there. I'm just trying to push the limits a little bit more. My first half was good. Are we up through sector two? We are improving. It's a personal best. A little bit wide there. We're going to miss the apex a little bit, which is going to cost me some time. Sense down at the minute. We need to try and nail this turn on if we can. A little bit wide again there, but we are going to find a bit more exit speed, I think. And a little bit more top end speed on the straight. I can go a little bit later into this hairpin, I think. I got off the brake a little bit there and it didn't really work out using first gear to try and get the exit we are up though in sector 3 though so we have found some time a little short shift just to make sure we get the power down that'll do tyres are looking good they're looking equally worn which is what I want a little, little lift and a little short shift there that worked out a lot better for me than last time final corner we ran a bit wide last time this time we're much closer to the apex and we get the power down so much earlier that was a much better end to the lap the rear tyre paying dividends. Here we go up to the line. There it is, 54-1. That's better. That's more like it. That should be pole position and that should be the benchmark and the reference point. Job done. Very good lap there. Okay, so there we go. Then qualifying results are in and we are on pole position once again here today at Catalonia. We've actually beaten the objective of a top 10. So our objectives in qualifying have gone from a top 15 to top 10 and we've done that. Beating Garcia by half a second and uh, Amos actually at the end they managed to get P3 and set a decent lap. To be fair, there's quite a gap to Messia in P4 and it was only Garcia and Amos that managed to get into the 154. So all in all, great pace from us. We look very comfortable. The question is, can we be just as comfortable in the race? Let's find out. It's time for round seven for the Catalan GP. Here we go then. We're on the grid for the Catalan GP and there is Sergio Garcia, my main championship rival. I think he's going to be the man now for the rest of the season. I think Amos... Seems to be a little bit more inconsistent lately and he's struggling a bit more to hold on. He's still in the mix, but he is struggling a little bit more compared to uh, Garcia. So uh, either way, the three championship leaders are on the front row. So that's kind of what you expect. And hopefully we could try and convert the pole position into a race win. First of all, though, as usual, we're going to go for the tyre change. So for this one, based off of practice wear, the soft is tempting. I, I, I can't lie. I do fancy a soft front. And I think I'm going to go for it. I'm going to go for a soft front and a medium rear. I think we can get away with it around here. I think it should be okay, which is quite surprising. I'm used to catching it being a bit more heavy on the tyres. But it seems to be working. It's also, you know, not running the assists seems to be working as well. We'll just confirm that the assists are off as we look at the ECU. And there you go. Everything's off on zero. So that's fantastic. So let's get into it then. Let's, uh, let's get to work and let's try and win yet another race and uh, try and extend our championship lead. Here we go then, the five lights come on at Catalunya. Lights out and away we go. Good start, good reaction to the five lights. 
Look at this. Let's have a look off the line. Let's see who gets the better start. And look at that. Look at the power on our bike. My teammate as well, I think that is, joining me there down towards turn one. Uh, Renas, I think that is. Just goes to show the upgrades in the bike really paying off in terms of straight line speed power. Uh, so we really pull away there. Alonso Lopez has gone down on the Australia Galicia. So that's good for us in the Constructors Championship as we go through turn three. But I believe that was Arenas. Oh no, it's actually Masia in P2. So I wonder if my teammate, that was my teammate after all. I guess we'll find out. Garcia is all over the back of Masia though. Let's try and pull away though. We've got the soft tire of course in the front and the medium on the rear. As Garcia takes P2, he's going to have a look at me actually down the inside here. I'm just going to take the, the, the racing line and get in front. This is a tricky corner as well. As Garcia sends one down the inside, he's going to be so wide and he's going to have a poor exit here. We're going to get the run on him. Our straight line speed is going to help us out as well as we go back down the inside. And we're going to retake that position. Get the apex. Oh, Garcia's gone down. What? What's happened there? Oh, my days. Garcia's just gone down. We're going to have to find out. He's gone down again. So Garcia with a double crash as we have a wobble for turn nine. No idea what happened there, but Garcia goes down in a big way, I think twice. That's weird, that, because he was on a straight, so I'm not really sure how he's been able to go down there. I struggle with his hairpin so much. I lose so much time for the AR through here. If I get through unscathed, which I have, we're going to be okay. Binder's up to P2 now. But let's try and uh, open up a gap here if we can. Garcia's gone down, so this is our chance. Okay, decent little gap already now on the pitch straight. You can see here on lap two, things are looking good. Towards turn one, we're going to again try and find a break point. I'll struggle for this corner as well. Although I must admit that time, that was absolutely perfect. Better than qualifying in terms of getting the break point now. Feeling great confidence in the middle of the bike. It's really working well. And uh, the no assist is actually fine so far. Obviously, that's going to get harder as we move into Moto2 and MotoGP. But uh, we can manage that quite easily in this Moto3 machine. Garcia currently only up to P22. So he's not making great progress. So he's, he's P21 now. You see on the left hand side of the screen. Also, I believe uh, Booth Amos is now P2 behind me, so he's made a good start after, I believe, qualifying in third and then dropping that down to P6 on lap one. He's now uh, making good progress. He's back up to P2 as uh, we take a little bit too much curb there. But here we go, into the last lap of the Grand Prix. We don't have a huge gap and my tyres are pretty much halfway worn, so we're going to have to stay sharp here and make no mistakes because I don't have the best tyres for it. Amos actually sets the first lap of the Grand Prix there, 53 7, so. The AI actually setting the pace, setting the benchmark. Oh, that's a little bit hot. We're going to just about get sorted out. To be fair, but that lap of 53.7 from Bruce Amos in the race, that's incredible pace because uh, that's faster than qualifying. Remember, we did a 54.1 in qualifying and Amos did a 54.7, I think. So I don't know where that's come from, but incredible pace from him. AI going faster in the race than qualifying. So we're going to have to sharpen up here and uh, not capitulate to the pressure. Garcia now P19. Amos is kind of dragging everybody behind him along as well. Here we go then, down towards the hairpin. We've got a good gap. We managed to have a very strong turn nine. I can't lie though, the soft medium might have been a mistake if uh, we lose the position here. Binder and Booth Amos switch positions right at the death. We're going to run hot into the hairpin there. Can't get it so down. My front is absolutely cooking. So we've got to be careful here into these final few corners because my tyres have had it pretty much. Garcia is on an absolute rampage at the middle. I think he's up to P14. He's actually back into the points as he was down at P25 at one point, but through the plasma corner, we just need to have a good run, which is nice, that's what I'm talking about. Now the final corner here, all right, so easy, and there we go, that will do, my tyres are cooked, we almost came unstuck there, but we've managed to pull through, and we are going to win the Catalan GP, get in there, another 25 points to my name. And there we have the final race results then. And actually, we did a 53.9 in the race, to be fair. So that was better than qualifying. So we did our bit as well. We had to respond to uh, Amos's pace. And we did. But Amos with a 53.7, very strong pace. He gets P2 ahead of Darren Binder. Another 2-3 for them on the CRP Green Power team. So they're getting really good points in the constructors. But we lead the way in terms of the race results. And let's see where Garcia finished in the end. And he finished down in P14. So he's going to score a couple of points. Two points, I believe. So he recovered quite nicely to say he was... Down in P25, I believe, and crashed twice. But all in all, let's look at the Riders' Championship after that race. And we are now 24 points clear. And actually, Amos takes second place from Garcia. Garcia crashing for the second time in three races. And uh, that's going to mean a big swing in the championship. And we are 24 points clear at the top of the table. In terms of the constructors, though, CRP Green Power with Binder and Amos looking very good there in P1. We're still P2. 
and I'm trying to hold on there, but I need my teammates to do better and hopefully get more points. And then there's quite a bit of a gap there to Estrella Galicia, 0-0. So with that being said, that is it for Catalonia. And we're now going to move into the next race at the Dutch TT of Assen. My goodness me, that was scary. Very, very scary. Whoa. The curbs around here. What's wrong with the curbs? Gee whiz, they're absolutely killing me. There we go, job done. That practice program is done. The distance analysis for the track affinity. Much better than last time. We didn't really complete it properly in Catalonia, but this time we get a full maximum score. Now we're going to switch over, as usual, to the qualifying slash the quick lap simulation, I believe it's called. I always forget the name, but uh, we're going to get to that one now because obviously we want to try and do that lap. That's good enough for qualifying. We're currently P1 and fastest in the session with a 48.2. So um, already we're three, lap, three, pretty much three seconds up on the... Um, even the qualifying lap simulation, so we're pretty damn quick. But we're going to try and uh, go for a hot lap here on a set of softs on both my tyres. And we're going to see if we can try and at least get to the 47s. Um, I don't think I've got to push too hard. I think the lap we've already got is good enough for Q2. Quite a bit of traffic here on my uh, hot lap. We need to try and tackle this as best as we can. There's my teammate Fernandez. We're going to find the outside of him. We've got Foggia there as well. We're going to hopefully get the one on him and go down the inside before the kink. And then we've got Antonelli and Binder as well. So far, no real issues with the traffic. Will it be here though? I'm going to go shallow into the left, but it seems like the AI have got that same idea. So we're going to have to just sit here for now. Into the chicane. Oh, we're going to hit the back of Antonelli there a little bit. A little bit hot into the chicane. So that's going to be a pour into the lap, but that's okay. Not too fast. We should still go quicker. And no, we don't, but we do beat the uh, benchmark. So. There we go, we actually lost a lot of time there at the end. Quite a bit, we actually went slower than before. But still, that lap should be good enough anyway. Even if we didn't improve, oh sorry, even if we did improve, you know, it doesn't really matter. That lap itself, 485 I think that was. Uh, that should be good enough. Let's look at the current session. And there we go, 1.4 clear. So, um, I think we, sh we should be okay. I'm going to see a little bit further into the session and see how we get on. But I think we should be good for Q2. There we go then, we are into Q2, top seed, number one, so uh, the lapping FP1 was easily good enough, which is good again, so let's get to work and let's secure another pole position. Well then, qualifying, let's get to work and uh, let's try and get this lap straight away. Two fresh soft tyres, front and rear. Let's try and set the benchmark. Too shabby there, even though we have to go around the outside, we actually carried quite a bit of speed still. A little bit hot here though, I'm trying to get the brakes and slow it down. There's Garcia in front, so if we're catching him up, that's normally a good sign. I do seem to have good pace around here, which is, you know, Aston is my favourite circuit, along with uh, Philip Island and Magello. So uh, let's try and get this lap done. It's looking very good though, no complaints here, and uh, we haven't got the same kind of traffic into these final corners yet. I do have Garcia in front. I don't think he's going to get in our way too badly here. Ooh, a little bit too shallow there. I'm going to have a bit of a poor line out of this corner, but that's okay. Let's have a strong chicane. Oh, that's a bit of a corner cut there, but you know what? I don't think we gained too much time from that. I'll oh, short shift again, and there we go, 47-0. Oh, sorry, 47-2. And we do beat Garcia's lap. He literally just went fastest, so... I think I'm a little bit quick here, which is good, so I've got quite a bit of pace in the pocket. I reckon that lap should be enough. Tire wear also isn't too bad around here, so I reckon I can maybe squeeze in one more on these tires. Or not. <laughs> I think we're just going to back off. Having AI just constantly get in my way is just annoying, so uh, yeah, we're going to 
cool off and uh, watch how the session progresses, but I reckon that lap already will be good enough for pole position. I don't think we need to um, go back out again. Yep, there we go. Pretty much with a minute to go, it's looking good. And uh, Amos just reset, just improves to a 49.4 and goes P2 there, so he does improve right at the end, but no one really has the pace, so I think we should be good for pole position. And there we have it then confirmed as we do take pole once again, this time at Assen. The AI, no match for me around here. I'm way too quick around this circuit. Maybe they're a little bit quicker in the race, kind of like Catalonia. You know, they were fast in race trim, so we'll see how it goes. But uh, another pole, good stuff for us. And uh, let's try and convert that pole once again into another race win and try and pick up a big fat 25 points. Here we are then on the grid for the race here at the TT circuit of Aston. I just realised I forgot to do the assists for practice and qualifying again. So not that it feels much different at all, but we're going to turn them off for the race. I just completely forgot to be honest with you. So we're going to do that right now. And uh, hopefully my comment section isn't filled with comments saying you forgot to turn the assists off already, although it probably is. So we're going to turn those off and now we're going to adjust the tyres. So we're going to go for... Uh, soft front, medium rear for this one. Tire wear isn't too bad around here, so we should be okay. And um, I managed to go on top of the starters last time. It seems like on this year's game, the lights go out a lot quicker than in the past. So with that in mind, we're going to try and get another good start here and uh, see how it goes. With that being said, let's jump into it and let's see how we get on. It's time for round number eight for the Dutch TT in Assen. Here we go then, first gear selected, let's get ready for the five lights, lights out and away we go here at Assen, and again it seems like another good start from us, are we getting challenged, no we're not, we're actually pulling away again here, the upgrades really paying off as we have incredible power straight in our speed, towards turn one we managed to get the bike down to the apex, a little bit wider on the exit but we are going to stay in front and uh, keep our first place which is what you want, so very good start there from us. And uh, the upgrades just once again, you know, paying dividends for us in terms of, you know, allowing us to get into turn one still in first place. As uh, Marcos Ramirez crashes behind us, just a little bit wide there at the Struben hairpin. That's going to invite some pressure from behind slightly, but we, we got off okay. No more dramas. And uh, we're already on our bike here and opening up the gap. Della Porte is actually P2 in this race, so surprisingly, it's not Amos or Garcia. Garcia needs to get a second place this race at least to. Uh, you know, kind of respond to the championship as we wobble there a little bit. But be careful. It is overcast, so the conditions and the track temperature is a bit lower, so maybe that's giving us a little bit less grip. Track definitely doesn't feel as grippy as qualifying, a little bit more understeery as well. However, we are looking good though, and the gap is starting to increase behind, so it's looking very comfortable so far. This is, like I said, pretty much strongest track on the entire calendar, so it's important to maximize the points here. Because, like I said in the last episode, you, because we're going through these tracks for the first time, you don't know at what tracks the 120% AI uh, will be strong. I was aware that the AI were not particularly great at Catalonia, although they were pretty good for me. And I know Assen as well, they're not great, but that's just also down to me being really quick around here. Um, but, you know, other tracks before, like Magella, we really struggled. And Le Mans as well, you know, the AI were fast. Jerez as well. So, um, you know, it's pretty much 3 for 3, or 3 for 4 in this season so far. In terms of um, you know tracks for the AI where they're fast and slow in some tracks, so the AI difficulty has definitely improved, but it could be a little bit better. Another way we get a poor run for the chicane there, but we're still setting the pace 54-1, and that's what we want right there. That's strong pace. Let's keep pushing here and uh, trying to get the gap out nice and early. The Laporta is still P2 here, which is good. There we go. Then end of lap two. The gap is massive, absolutely massive. Cross the line 47-6. That's strong pace. Pretty much qualifying pace to be honest, and uh, we're much, much faster than anybody else. As we go to the last half of the Grand Prix, I completely butchered turn one there, but no worries. We're still comfortable, De La Porta still fighting away there in P2, so that's good news for us in the championship. Here we go then, it's looking dominant through sector three, and then to sector four, we will see very shortly if De La Porta still held on to P2. Hopefully, he has because that'd be great for us and also for him as well in his season. But here we go into the final chicane. And uh, it's been very, very comfortable. We completely messed the chicane up there and uh, we get it way too hot. But we are going to come through to win the Dutch TT at Assen. And there we go. Another 25 points to our name.
There we have it then, that's what I'm talking about as we win once again and it wasn't even close. We're three seconds faster than pretty much anybody else. Garcia though does get P3, Delaporta very comfortably P2 quite surprisingly and uh, his best result of the season so far. Darren Binder P4 and uh, Masia P5, Booth Amos only P6. So what does that mean for the Riders Championship? That means we are 39 points clear of both Garcia and Amos. They both switched places once again. But they are equal points and we are 39 clear of the pair of them. Della Porta P4, he overtakes Messia there. And all in all, it's looking very good for us as we extend our championship lead after this episode. Two very good races and uh, much easier than the last episode where the last episode we was really challenged. In terms of the team championship though, we are P2 and we close the gap to CRP Green Power down to 18 points. So doing our bit of course in terms of bringing home the major points and listening to my teammates to do a little bit more as always but guys that is going to be it for this episode and i hope you guys did enjoy if you did then drop a like and get subscribed for daily formula one and moto gp content and turn on notifications to not miss a video from me and finally check out these two videos on your screen if you have missed them guys but other than that thank you for watching i'll see you in my next episode very soon but until then it's goodbye from me